All right, Dale, let's talk about succulents. So what do we mean when we say succulents? Well, succulent plants are typically thought of as, uh, well, I like to call them fat, lazy plants. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because they're, they're, uh, they're, their tissues are sort of swollen and very fleshy, and that's how, that's how you identify them as succulent plants. A lot of people think succulents are cacti, mm -hmm. and it's true. All cacti are succulents, but, but not all succulents are cacti. All right. Um, they're sort of defined by these little spiny cushions that they have that, where the spines emerge. You know, because some succulents have spines, mm -hmm. but they're not coming from that spiny cushion. And so that's the, that's the distinguishing uh, characteristic. I happen to like the succulents that are, don't have spines because, I, you know, <laughs> when you're a gardener, you hate dealing with them. Right, exactly. But, uh, it, it's pretty amazing. These, uh, these plants have evolved these defense mechanisms and traits for survival because they store water in really watertight conditions. So everything wants to eat them, everything wants yeah. to, uh, you know, uh, from, from herbivory to uh, just, just surviving, just the heat and everything yeah. else. They're pretty amazing how they've adapted to survive. What kills more succulents than anything else? Probably overwatering. Uh -huh. Overwatering. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we, we have a, a succulent exhibition right now, right now at the Dixon, and, and one of the things that, uh, that we have are some uh, living rocks, some lithops. Right. I don't know if you've ever heard of lithops. They're from South that. Africa, and they look like stones. They use mimicry as their defense mechanism. Wow. Uh, we have a right. plant that's a euphorbia that looks like sticks. So uh, they ha you know, the leaves are modified so that it looks like dead sticks. Wow. And the lithops look like living rocks is what they call them. They look like rocks. So nothing eats them because they just sort of, they're disguised, I guess, in hiding. Like so anyway, um, they're from, uh, from South Africa. But I was going to tell you, I have killed lithops more times. <laughs> than You never water them. That's the key. If you ever water them, they're just gone. So wow. occasionally you see them at box stores and stuff. They'll have okay. these living stones and you can... Uh, they have a pretty hefty price tag, but uh, <laughs> but I think they're real slow to grow and really difficult. So, so they don't have to be watered pretty much, not at all. Or just they grow in in, uh, in South Africa in conditions that are really really wow. arid and hot and inhospitable. So it's uh, yeah, wow. really dry west facing conditions. So, um, but anyway, we have uh, if you think about it, there's all these different mechanisms. You know, some plants. Uh, actually uh, separate, there's sort of a day-night separation in okay. their photosynthetic process where, you know, they're splitting uh, CO2 to, to build, you know, uh, basic photosynthesis that you learn in elementary school. Mm -hmm. But uh, CAM plants, as, as they're called, uh, which is long-term is Crassulacean acid metabolism, oh but CAM is what you need to right. CAM plants. They actually uh, open their stomates, un the okay. little pores under the leaves at night so they can take in the CO2 at night. They hold it in, and then when the sun's shining during the day, they do photosynthesis. That way, if, if they were to open those pores when it's so hot outside, yeah. they would all the water would right. just right. instantly right. desiccate and right. go out. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, but, especially uh, here, yeah. But these, these succulents are really, really popular. I, you know, you go to... I was at a, a, a local grocery store, and I walk in, and they have this succulent display. Everybody just loves them because they're, they're easy to care for, you know. Um, because of these adaptive advantages, they're, they're used, you know, a lot of these are hardy outdoors, and they're being used as sort of the backbones of the workhorses of everything from green roofs. You know, uh, yeah. there's a couple of green roofs in Memphis, but uh, they hadn't really caught on. Um, more urban areas like Chicago and New York and stuff, these green roofs are a really big deal. Uh, I think there's acres and acres of green roofs in Chicago and there's wow. uh, uh, tax incentives that t for businesses that you know incorporate this into their uh, their thing. So anyway. Um, well, we need somebody to you know introduce those practices here though to get yeah, more people to get involved with it. Uh, you know I think there uh, I think Tresvent Manor here has a, has a green roof and there's a, a, a doctor's office out in, out in Bartlett I think okay. that, that has a green roof. Um, but uh, the, certainly the technology's there. Oh, sure it is. But just like, you know, all the questions, you get everything so localized. Yes. And, you know, in Memphis it works one way, and every, you know, somewhere else it might not work the same way. So really a lot of research needs to be done on which plants yeah. work best. We've put in a little green roof at the, at, the, at the Dixon, which was kind of fun. It's just a small space, but uh, it's kind of neat to see. And then living walls. Do you mm -hmm. know about these living walls? The sort of vertical gardening. Mm -hmm. um, they're real easy to build. We, we just sort of used uh, recycled materials that repurposed. Uh, Susie Askew had kept these big long troughs that were used for something horticulturally. I don't know if it was a hydroponic mm -hmm. thing or something, but big galvanized troughs. And uh, we, uh, we made a, a media that was real lightweight and uh, 
and uh, filled these troughs with succulents. And so now we, and they're sort of louvers, and it's a, it's a vertical garden at the Dixon. It's, it's really neat. Um, tell, tell me this, what type of media do you need for succulents? I mean, what? Well, f fast draining, sharp fast, media, okay. yeah, as you would suspect. Um, fast draining, you don't want anything that holds a lot of moisture. Right. And, uh, you know, they're not big nutrient hogs, so they don't need a lot of, mm. a lot of you know, high nutrients. So um, if you had potting soil that you wanted to use for succulents, I would just mix in some sand or a little gravel or something. Um, there used to be a product made across the river that's this clay that they heat up real hot and expand it. You ever hear of Arcolite? Arcolite. Arcolite. No, thanks for it used to be sold over in Arkansas. Now I think uh, the nearest supplier is down in, in Alabama, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure what the product was originally used for, but it's like clay that's been expanded. It has a lot of pore space. Mm -hmm. But um, you know Paul Little. I do. He, he's of a big, course. He's, he's, anybody's talking guy. succulents yeah. in Memphis, you got to know Paul. <laughs> You're right. But uh, Paul said he used to drive over to Arkansas and get it, and the first time he went over there in his little Toyota pickup truck, he said by the time he made it back to his nursery, his truck was empty because the stuff flew out like that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. So it's like So that. it's real lightweight. Light. Yeah, yeah, real lightweight. Light. So like kind of like, you know, start, it may be a heated bentonite. I'm not sure exactly the product, but um, that works really well for green roofs because it's lightweight. Okay. And uh, different considerations when you're going vertical or covering a rooftop, you know. Okay. Let me ask you about sedums for a second because, you know, folks grow a lot of sedums. Um, again, what type of care do you need for them? Because we actually got a couple of calls at the office about people growing sedums, but the sedums were rotten, rottening for some reason or, uh, or the other. So, yeah, you know, um, what have you seen? But with first of all, you need to buy good quality plants from a good nursery that okay. that, that uh, uh, knows what they're doing. I've seen, um, I have seen uh, plants where uh, slugs or snails get in there mm. and can cause some damage. Mm -hmm. I've uh, I've seen sow bugs or or but I, and I think they're actually uh, eating some of the root. They may be secondary. What are your thoughts on? They can. They can. Sow bugs and pill bugs can eat actually eat foliage. Yeah. So I've I've they seen eat a that. Lot of that. Yeah. But uh, material. In, in general, you put them in. You uh, water them in initially when you plant them to settle the soil and get everything done. And then they're they're really really low maintenance. Okay. I mean, uh, that's what I thought. You know, cut yeah. the water down to a third of what you would normally do. I would say something like that. So, um, I, I imagine uh, overwatering is probably the, the best the best way to kill them if you're if you're yeah. trying to get rid of them. So. I imagine you gotta have good drainage. But yeah, we've gotten that question a lot here lately. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to run that past you. But they're, they're beautiful. A lot of different they colors. Are. They are. And uh, you know, it, there's there's a lot of from small to large. There's a lot of sedums. A lot of succulents. Mm -hmm.